Hi, today we're going to go over the motion regarding custody. So we're actually going to go through all the form that you're going to need to fill out if you're going to file a motion regarding custody. So why would you be filing a motion regarding custody? Custody motions are filed whenever uh, one party uh, believes that they should have a change in custody. So meaning this could be in legal custody regarding um, who has decision-making uh, authority for the child. So this is major decisions, right? So we're talking about where the child goes to school, what religion they practice, what medical care they're getting. So that's that's kind of the uh, legal custody sort of stuff. And then physical custody is uh, what most people consider, which is where does the child reside most of the time? And so when either of those need to be changed or a party wants those to be changed, they're going to need to fill out a motion regarding custody. So we're going to go over that form today. If you've got questions beyond what we uh, cover as we go through the form, then you're going to want to go to michiganlegalhelp.org or contact an attorney uh, to get more information about how to fill out a motion regarding custody or how to petition the court if you have a custody issue. All right, so we're gonna switch over right now to the actual motion regarding custody. Now, I did pull this from our website at the Genesee County Front of the Court website, and what you can see up here at the very top is, so this is the, it's called the motion regarding custody packet. You can pull that from, uh, again, the Genesee County Friend of the Courts website, or you can come into our office or reach out to us at any of the ways that uh, we're available to be uh, reached by phone, email, or on social media, and we will get you a copy of this if this is what you're looking for. Um, the idea behind this is that this is going to be a form that's going to be filled out by somebody who does not have an attorney. If you uh, want to get an attorney, uh, you, custody is a very complicated area of the law, and so it might be a situation where you do want to hire an attorney to do this. If you do that, the, your attorney will help you prepare this, uh, this motion, um, and you wouldn't need this packet. But if you're going to try to go alone and you're going to fill this out on your own, then you're going to want to uh, uh, go through this form. So we're going to go through this form to together. So you can see that there is a $100 total filing fee. This is paid at the clerk's office. This is not paid at the front of the court. Um, so this is uh, going to be paid at the clerk's office. The clerk's office that I'm referencing is on the second floor of the Genesee County Circuit Court house that's the big courthouse in downtown flint with the cannons out front and that's where the filing is going to be made and that is also where um all of the filing fees are going to be made there is a fee waiver available if you're unable to pay this fee and that fee waiver form is available on our website as well okay so i'm going to go ahead and go down these are all the instructions so if you are going to read along these are the instructions that you'll need to go through if you're going to fill out this form but we're going to actually walk through this one together so um, everybody has a pretty good idea of how this works so if again if you're filing this in genesee county which is what we're referencing it would be the seventh judicial circuit and then this is going to be genesee county up here and then Right here is where you're going to put your case number. So your case number is going to come from where whatever your court filing uh, papers already have. So if you're filing a motion regarding custody, that means you probably already have a case with the court. And so you're going to want to uh, pull up any of the last order that you have um, from court regarding custody or parenting time, because that's going to be really relevant as you fill out this form. Okay. So at the usually at the top of that form there's going to list uh, who your judge is and it's also going to list uh, your case number so the case numbers usually look something along these lines it'll be something along the lines of uh, 2005 and then it'll be 325 or something along those lines 123 and then it's going to be something along the lines of dm ds dp dz or DC. One of those types of cases normally if you're filing a custody motion it's going to be normally one of those types of, of cases. So let's assume this is a DP case. The um, plaintiff name and defendant's name and address and telephone number. Okay, So this is where you're going to put down uh, plaintiff's name and defendant's name. How are you going to find out what the pl plaintiff's name and defendant's name is? That's going to also be on whatever that last document was that you had in the court file. The 
plaintiff is not always is going to be whoever started the initial action um, but that doesn't mean it's who's filing this motion right now uh, it's whoever filled out the the first uh, uh, started the fir- the case in the first place so it could actually be the defendant who is the moving party now or it could be plaintiff who's the moving party now there it really depends on what's going on so here where we're going to put on uh, the the information about the parties okay this is down here uh you can see if you had a third party on the case that's where you would put that information so we're gonna move forward as if there's uh, not a third party on the case and so what we would do is you know we're just gonna put as we don't want to bore you guys as we go through this um but so i won't fill everything out here but i do want to kind of show you this is where you're going to put and you would put the the city as well and you would put a phone number i'm not going to do that just because i want to be able to move through this quickly so that everybody gets the information that's really relevant here but you are going to check who the moving party is so is John filing this motion or is Jane filing this motion? And so when I say filing this motion, it's the person who's literally filing it at the clerk's office and they're the one who's asking for the relief. So who is asking for the change? Let's say in this scenario, it's John who's asking for the change. And so we're gonna check moving party there. Over here, now we're moving on to step one over here with the little C next to it. So. A or B. One of these needs to be checked. Um, A is going to say that, yep, there is already a court order regarding custody and parenting, regarding custody already out there. Um, or B, there isn't an order regarding custody out there. Okay. So um, most of the time, if you're filing a motion regarding custody, it's because you're wanting to change the custody that already exists. If you're starting a new case, there's a lot more complicated things that need to be done, like a, a summons and complaint and all that sort of stuff. So generally speaking, you're not going to be checking this box. You're not going to be checking B. This is going to be normally going to be checking A. Each case is different. That's not to say that you wouldn't be um, ever doing that. But most of the time when somebody's coming to the front of the court and they're wanting to do a motion to change custody, they are going here to a and they're going to put in the and right here you're going to put in the date that the last order uh or or an order was entered regarding custody it's usually best to put in what the last order was uh, because that's going to be very relevant as it relates to the custody information so let's pretend that the last order uh was uh for a change of custody was entered on five seven twenty 12. Okay. So that was when the last order was entered. And so we're going to be uh, talking about um, that there's been a change since that last order was entered. Step two here attached is a completed Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act affidavit. I'm going to show you what that form looks like really quick. So here is the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act affidavit. Just like on the others, you're going to put in the Seventh Judicial Circuit up here. You're going to put Genesee County there. You're going to put your case number up here and your judge. And you're going to put case name, which is going to be in our situation here, John Doe versus Jane Smith. Okay. And then you're going to need to fill out all of this information here. So the name and present address of each child that's under 18 in this case. And so you're going to need to fill that out. The address where the children has been has lived within the last five years name and present address of the custodians with whom the children have lived within the last five years so you're going to need to put all of that information so if the children have lived with both parents on and off something along those lines and we're need to going to need to put both parents names in there as well as any third parties if the children have stayed with anyone else over the last couple of years um And then right here, I do not know of and have not participated in any court uh, decision, order, or proceeding. And 
then it defines what proceeding means and it doesn't just mean divorce proceedings it means all sorts of different proceedings including guardianship proceedings including termination of parental rights proceedings or domestic violence proceedings concerning the custody or parenting time of the children in this state or any other state okay and so if there's already an order out there like there is in this case because uh, we're filing a motion you're going to put that that one's there what this is really saying is we want to make sure that no other state in the country is also has a custody order on regarding these children right and so this is that's one of the things that's really important here um is to make sure that there's nothing going on in any other states around the country. That's what this Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act is all about, is making sure that Michigan is the right place for um, this case to be filed and that Michigan has jurisdiction over these children's. Uh, and so uh, over the children's case. So one of the things that you're gonna look here is, is, is there anything pending in any other states right now? Um, or in this state so it could even be in another county in this state again wanting to make sure that this court has jurisdiction so if uh you've got a genesee county case but there's also something happening in clinton county then we need to know that something's happening in clinton county um, to make sure that this court has jurisdiction to be addressing custody and parenting time and six I do not know of any person who is already party already a party to this proceeding who has physical custody or who claims rights of legal or physical custody or parent of or parent time with the children except boom and then so again uh, this is just trying to make sure that um, the people who are involved in this case um, this motion who are notified of this motion are the ones who need to know then that there's nobody else who needs to know about what's going on other than these uh, two parents who are involved in this case and then the children's home state is and then it will see says see next page for definition of home state so you're going to need to check that out see what home state actually means it has a legal definition and you're going to want to be able to um, know that i'm going to for the purposes of this video we're going to assume that the last order was in michigan there has never been anything else in any other state and that the neither parent has left the state of Michigan and everybody's here in Michigan. That's how most cases are, but there are all these unusual rules and difficult situations that do come up when either party or the child leaves the state of Michigan. And there's a whole bunch of different rules as it relates to that. If you want to find out more about that sort of thing, I highly recommend checking out me, Michigan legal help, uh, org or contacting the attorney who can kind of go over some of the more difficult details that exist when you've got what's called an interstate case involving multiple states in custody. And so right here, I've filled this form out completely and I acknowledge a continuing duty to advise this court of any proceeding in this state or any other state that could affect the current child custody proceeding. And then so then your signature, your name, your address, and then this is a document that needs to be notarized. Okay, if you ever need a document notarized, uh, we do have notaries at the Genesee County Friend of the Court, and you can uh, come to our office to have documents notarized. Okay, let's switch back over to the motion regarding custody. So every time you notice there's no checkbox on this one, every time you fill out this form, the motion regarding custody, you're going to need to fill out the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act affidavit. Why? because we have to make sure that this court, the Genesee County Circuit Court, the Seventh Judicial Circuit Court, is the appropriate place to hear this motion. And it might not be, uh, maybe that another state's involved or maybe another county's involved and we need to have that information. So that's the purpose there. All right, so moving on to number three here with the D next to it, and we're gonna check plaintiff, defendant, or third party was ordered to have custody of the following children. So we're going to go be looking back at this order from 2012 and we're going to say, okay, in this order from 2012, um, who was ordered to have custody? The plaintiff, John, defendant, Jane, or third party. And again, if we had a third party involved, then we should have had them listed up here. Okay. And what we're going to be saying is not who's actively, um, what's necessarily going on but who was ordered to have custody of the children based on this last order 
You'll notice I'm using fictitious numbers here. That's because I can't be going over an actual case with everybody. So we're using all fictitious numbers. So you're not going to have more than likely a 2005 DP. This is a fake number. This is a fake order date. Um, this is just really to helpful, hopefully help everybody get an understanding of the sorts of things that you're going to need to do if you're going to fill this out. So here, uh, at number four, the children have been living with, and then you're going to put the name at what the address that they've been living at since what date you know you may notice that these are two different questions this question number three is asking what did the order last say and then number four is talking about where have they been living who have they been living with and at what address since when there is a missing box here because uh i'm sorry i'm going to go back up here to three plaintiff defendant third party was ordered to have custody of the following children there is a missing uh, box here and where you would want to write in the the children's names okay um, so the children have been living with who have they been living with complete address since what date okay now for five and six these are going to be important legal um, uh, things that you're going to need to write down, but they're basically facts. What you're going to need to write down are certain facts, but these are the legal standards for every any time somebody needs or, or wants to change custody. Okay, so first, proper cause exists or circumstances have changed as follows, and you'll notice they didn't. The the forms team did not make this just a simple forms fill in box because they're asking you to attach a separate sheet. Why are they asking you to attach, attach a separate sheet? Because there's usually going to need to be a lot of detail indicating why there what and why there's been a proper change of circumstances and what that proper change of circumstances is. So this is where you're going to detail what's happened since the last time there was the you were in court uh, on related to custody what's changed what have been the big changes in the life of the child or changes that have happened in the family dynamic that make it so that it's it's appropriate to change custody generally speaking the the law is that there's got to be a if if there's already an established custodial environment meaning that one parent already is the one who the child looks to for care and and love and affection and guidance then there's going to be a high threshold for us to change that so if there's going to be um if the court is going to really look at uh, a change in custody then it's going to be very important that there's going to be a detail here indicating what that uh, what that change needs to be and why that change needs to happen and then number six again attaching another sheet for for this one as well because a lot of detail is also going to be needed here it's in the best interest interest of the children to establish or change custody for the following reasons and then it says use a separate sheet to explain in detail which best interest factors under the child custody act support this motion and attach uh, include all necessary facts. So again, why is it going to be in the best interest of the, the child, which is the the most important uh, consideration whenever the court is looking at a child custody change, is why is it in the best interest of the children to change custody? So what, for that, we're going to jump over to the Child Custody Act. And so this is MCL 722.23. You can just type in to, uh, whatever search uh, you use, whether that's Google, Bing, something along those lines. You can just type in uh, Michigan Child Custody Act, and uh, this will this will pop up. And and then it's going to list the best interests of the child. This is coming straight from the Ch Child Custody Act. And so when uh, we're looking at the form and it's saying, hey, tell me what uh, reasons why this is in the best interest of the child based on the Child Custody Act. This is what it's referring to. It is referring to these factors right here, the child custody factors. So anytime somebody's going to be filing a motion uh, or defending a motion related to a, a change in custody, then they need to be very familiar with the best interests of the child factors from the Child Custody Act. All right switching back over to the motion regarding custody um, here seven is uh, what you would fill out if you and the other party agree to the custody support and parent time as follows um, so um, this is going to be something where uh, mom and dad 
agree that they uh, want the child custody, uh, the child's custody to change. And so this is the box they would check there. If you have an agreement already and you have a Genesee County friend of the court case, you can just reach out to our office and we would be happy to assist you in getting that order um, sent to the judges. We'll help you prepare it. Um, we'll do custody, parenting time, and child support. Um, or if there's no interest in having friend of the court services, we'll also help you opt out of friend of the court services. So um, if you have a ag full and complete agreement, there's no reason for you to fill out this, this motion and have to go to court and have a court date. We will take care of that uh, for you and we will uh, get you in front of a referee to make any sort of record that needs to be made, but we'll also help you prepare the order. So if you have a full and complete agreement, don't check box seven contact the Genesee County friend of the court. Um, if you have a case in another county, reach out to your friend of the court and see if they offer those services um, and, or if there's other services they may be able to offer to help out in this situation. Every uh, county and every uh, court is a little bit different, so uh, definitely worth reaching out to see what services exist in your community if you don't have a Genesee County case. And then number eight, I asked the court to order that custody, parent time and support be as follows. So here we're saying, what do you think that the custody order and parent time order and support order should look like if the court was going to grant you everything that you wanted? So in this scenario, say John is the one filing the motion and we wanna say that defendant was ordered to have custody. The children have been living with um, Jane Smith, and we're going to put down the, the you know at the address for uh, Jane Smith. So and we enter in the date. So let's just say it actually does match up with uh, what the order the order date was. And and then so. Down here, you would be saying, well, what is what would the custody look like um, moving forward if you got everything you wanted? So maybe it would look like something along the lines of joint custody. Maybe it's going to be something where the parenting time is just going to change considerably from what it is now. And that's why we're having the discussion regarding custody as well all sorts of different things that can be included here in eight that's why it's got a separate sheet as well so basically it's where you can indicate what you're asking uh, for the court order to look like if you uh, were able to succeed on your motion and the court were able to grant what you were looking for what would your court order look like after that okay and so that's what that's all about date here for when you're filling this out sign there moving party signature when you take this to the court uh, to be filed with the clerk's office, they're going to um, fill out this information for you. They're going to fill out the judge or referee that you're going to appear in front of. In Genesee County, you would you would appear in front of a referee. And they'll give you the date, time, and location. Um, as it is, uh, 2022 is we're preparing uh, this video. Um, still a lot of hearings are happening via zoom um, due to the covid pandemic um, that may continue into the future uh, but so you may also get a uh, an attachment indicating what the zoom information or zoom id would be that you would use to uh, appear for the the motion hearing so one of the things that's I always want to talk about when it comes to motion hearings a um, couple of things actually really important so first is right here what it says on the um, on on the paperwork here. If you need special accommodations or you need a foreign language interpreter, make sure to reach out to the court in advance so that the court can uh, supply those. Uh, the the court will supply an interpreter if if needed, or um, can provide other um, methods of appearing for the hearing if needed. So make sure if you have any special needs for. Um, for attending the hearing that you ask for those uh, in advance so that there's nothing that's going to slow down your hearing. The other thing is that um, the way the court system works is that uh, everything starts with a motion. So the first step in any in any um, in any uh, request of the court is a motion. The motion hearing is 
not intended to be the the hearing where there's a big long trial and evidence is presented and all those sorts of things the whole point of the motion hearing is for the court to decide whether there was enough in the paperwork that was filed to say yes this should move forward to a hearing especially when we're talking about custody custody is a it's uh, there's a high threshold to make a change. It's very important that uh, the court get this right. So they're going to spend time um, actually having a hearing or taking evidence or trying to mediate the case before, um, before they make any uh, changes to custody. So when you file a motion for custody, it is very unlikely that anything's going to be decided on that day except for whether the issue is going to be um, set for hearing down the road right so that's really the purpose of the motion hearing is there enough of a change of circumstances is there enough uh in the paperwork that was filed to say yes this should go for a hearing so that we can discuss further whether there should be a change of custody okay and so that's really the purpose of a motion hearing it is not to get into all the details so don't expect that you're going to be there for hours um to you know, having your trial at this on this first date, expect that it may take about 15 to 20 minutes um, for your case to be heard. Um, it's going to be some very basic information presented to the court, and then the court's going to make a decision about whether this moves forward to have um, to have a full blown hearing or or not. And so uh, that is the purpose of the hearing. Don't expect that you're going to be presenting evidence or bringing witnesses or anything along those lines. Um, the other thing about hearings is, uh, you know, dress appropriately uh, for the court hearing. Even if you are on Zoom, you know, uh, we, we've uh, there's a lot more casual uh, attires allowed, certainly on on Zoom. But uh, please be prepared for uh, prepared for court and and. Uh, you know, don't be driving, those sorts of things. If you're appearing on Zoom, um, give the court your undivided attention. If you are going in person, dress appropriately for court, of course. You're gonna wanna give yourself uh, plenty of time. If you are going to court, um, you're gonna get a date and time. Uh, say, it's gonna say in Genesee County, probably gonna be like 1.30 on Monday or something along those lines that you're gonna have uh, your, your time to go to court. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time. A lot of other people are also going to have motions scheduled at the exact same time, and there's going to be a lot of other court hearings that are going to be scheduled at the exact same time, and everybody's going to need to go through a metal detector, um, and they're all going to funnel through uh, one of two doorways. So really want to make sure that um, if you are, are having a hearing in person that you're giving yourself plenty of time and, um, and are being aware that you know everybody else is probably coming in at about the same time as you are, so you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time. So those are a couple of tips as it relates to motion practice and um, also just appearing for court hearings. So um, this is the cert uh, where you would certify that you've uh, filed that motion that are um, that you served a copy of this motion and the child custody jurisdiction enforcement. Act affidavit that we uh, went over earlier and the notice of hearing. So again, you're not going to do this sort of certificate of mailing until you've gotten that notice of hearing um, from the clerk's office. So you're going to want to make sure that you get your notice of hearing from the clerk's office first, then you're going to uh, then you're going to serve this on other parties. If the other party has a confidential address and you uh, don't know their address and you need help serving because uh, you need it mailed to the confidential address, uh, that's something that the friend of the court can do for you. The Genesee County friend of the court will do that. So if you have if the other party has a confidential address and you don't know the conf their address, we will mail uh, the motion to their address for you. So please feel free to bring that over to our office if that comes up. Down here, we have contact information. And so this is where you can say if you've got new contact information or if it's the same, check the box if it's new. Um, again, you're gonna still put in your case number and your judge, um, just like we did above. And what we're looking for here is to make sure that we've got good information. And then you're also being able to opt in or opt out of whether you uh, can can or cannot receive text messages, voice messages from the court, um, emails, 
um, so that we can notify you of hearing dates with these other uh, options, right? We're moving more and more to electronic filing and we're moving more and more to reaching out to uh, families that we serve in new and different ways. So we're not just using paper uh, to notify people of their court hearings and information about their case anymore. We're texting folks, we're emailing families. Um, and so if you've got that information and you provide it to us, we'll be happy to um, uh, move with the times and uh, make sure to get information out to uh, parties and families uh, who have cases with us. So right here um, by signing this form I authorize the name of the court that's gonna be the seventh judicial circuit court to notify me of upcoming events in this case um, and that I will receive text email and or voice notifications to the phone number or email address listed on this form so again it's just opting in so that we can reach out to you we know that uh, uh, mail is not the best way for everybody and uh, so we want to make sure that we have come up with the best way to reach out to you and uh, that for many people uh, these days is text message phone message voicemail on a cell phone or uh, email and so we want to be able to to offer those as well so um, make sure you fill this out super useful uh, we'll make it so that we'll be able to reach out to you um, uh, if anything is is going to happen so uh, on the case so sometimes that could be that there's been like a change of circumstances um, like we're not going to be able to have the hearing on the date that we thought we were going to and we maybe need to change that date and so we want to let you know that so it could be for things like that um, and we want to make sure that we we have that as well so a couple of things on filing that I want to make sure everybody's aware of. So when you are going to file your motion, so you let's say, let's look at this motion. You filled it all out. You've got it exactly how you want. You've signed it. You're going to take it in to the clerk's office to file it. You've got your $100 or you've got your fee waiver order already um, signed by the judge. No, and you're going to take it to the clerk's office. What you're going to want to do, and this is in our instructions, so I'm going to show you where it is in the instructions here you're going to want to take three copies of that form and any of the attachments. So if you've, hopefully you've attached extra sheets like um, like the instructions have told you to do, you're gonna to want to take three copies of all of that information, including the um, any of the uh, attachments and, um, and, and take those to the court um, because you've got uh, a bunch of different copies that you're going to need to get out. Um, the one, the original is going to go to the, the court and it's going to get filed with the clerk's office. You're going to want a copy for yourself and um, you're going to have a, a copy that you're going to need to serve on at least one of the other parties. And if there's multiple parties, you're going to need more copies. So this is why you want to make sure that you have uh, plenty of copies uh, when you go to the court uh, to make your your filing and then after that um, uh, you're gonna do the service and again here's some uh, instructions on the service um, you, you got to serve the notice uh, at least nine days before the hearing date so um, make sure that you're gonna make this a priority um, and uh, there's a few different ways that you can do this is you can um, you mail a copy um, uh, and any attachments and the notice of hearing you can take it to our office if there's a confidential address and you need it mailed we'll we'll be happy to do that um, if it's in and then once you uh, have done that mailing then you complete out the certificate of mailing and then you file that certificate of mailing with the clerk's office uh, which is going to uh, prove to the court that the other person has been served okay and that certificate of mailing has to be filed seven days before the hearing so you got to serve it nine days before and you got to get it then that certificate of mailing showing that you served it um, seven days before the hearing okay um, and so that's what you've what you've got to do there and um, again on the attending the hearing um, make sure you t you attend um, if you get a motion filed and you're the other party so a motion's been filed and you're the other party and you've received that motion um, you know 
you can respond to that motion. It is a good idea to respond to that motion um, to let your side of uh, the story be told. So, um, and we have uh, response packets available on our website too. So if you are responding to a motion regarding custody, we have that packet available on our website as well. So you can, um, you can always find that as well and um, uh, fill that out and file that with the clerk's office. And then all the same process as it relates to, um, to all of this. Uh, serving the other party with that information um, and again just some some tips here dressing appropriately listening to what's being said um, you know wait to speak don't don't uh, this is not a situation where you're going to want to be arguing with the other party the the whole point is to present your case to the court and let the court make their decision and um, generally speaking in Genesee County if you've uh, filed a motion for custody and you're doing it um, on your own using this this packet um, or what we would call pro per or pro se um, then if you're doing that then you're probably going to go in front of a referee and if you go in front of a referee then the referee is going to uh, again one of two things they're either they're going to prepare a referee recommendation or they're going to set it for a hearing down the road for the actual uh, evidentiary hearing where you're going to be able to call witnesses all that sort of stuff um, and uh, then they'll set that down the road um, but even after that's done they're still going to prepare a referee recommendation and um, and when a referee recommendation is prepared, then the parties have 21 days to object uh, from the time that they that uh, referee recommendation is served on them. They have 21 days to object to that. If they object and within that 21 day time period, then they will get a hearing in front of a judge where they can um, indicate the reasons why they're objecting to the referee's recommendation, what they're what they think that the referee got wrong um, as it relates to facts. That's not an opportunity to retry the entire case. It's to say, hey, I think the referee missed uh, this issue um, or didn't handle this issue correctly. Um, and so that's the purpose of objecting from the referee recommendation. If nobody objects to the referee recommendation, then then that order is going to become or that recommendation is going to become the order of the court. So it's really important that people review those uh, referee recommendations when they get them, because if they do nothing, then that referee recommendation is then going to become the, the final court order. So that's uh, that is the, the process there. Um, the objection to a referee's recommended order is available on our website um, if you are wanting to object to a referee recommendation. Um, if you do object, then the clerk's office will give you a date. Uh, just like when you filed the motion, they'll give you a date for when you're supposed to return. Okay, so there we have it. That is the motion regarding custody. So just a quick recap, make sure before you fill out the form that you have a good idea of the Uniform Child or the Child Custody Act and you have an understanding of uh, proper cause and best interest. If you're not sure about that, make sure to check out michiganlegalhelp.org or contact an attorney to uh, get some advice on that area of the law. You're going to want to pull up your last court order because you're going to need to be able to put down some information about your last court order. You're going to want to have contact information for the other party because you're going to need to serve them with the motion. And you're going to want to put lots of details and make sure that you're telling the court exactly what you want to have happen if your motion succeeds. So that's motion regarding custody in a nutshell. We'll be back with more uh, motion packets and explaining more forms that are available on the Genesee County Friend of the Court website. If you do ever need a copy of a motion uh, packet or any of the other forms that the Friend of the Court offers or are unsure if the Friend of the Court does offer that form, please feel free to reach out to the Genesee County Friend of the Court. Um, as always, we're here to serve.